I'm looking to talk to the spirit that was calling my name when I was a child. Welcome back to the I Have My Doubts channel. My name is Stephen Heider. This is my wife. I'm Kim Heider. <laughs> so today we want to talk about the skeptics in the room. Are you like myself? Very skeptical of anything paranormal. So am I. I'm very skeptical of anything that has to do with the paranormal. But what I will say is today's story is my story. It is the one event that happened that I really don't have a ton of answers for, and if I'm being quite honest, it scared the crap out of the younger me. So without further ado, I'll ask you just this one question before we start today's story. What would you do laying down in your bed tonight? Maybe by your lonesome, even with your partner beside you. What if you heard something calling your name? A tiny home. Probably not by today's definition of what is considered a tiny home, but nonetheless a very small cottage, roughly just over 500 square feet. So wait a second, wait a second, 500 square feet? Yeah, we were living high times back then, man, I mean that was a lap of luxury. Look, 500 square feet is like a cardboard box. Yeah, it was a small house, guys, <laughs> like, I could, I could literally toss a ball in the air like this from one side to the other. It didn't require me to wind up and make a strong throw. I know that seems like a very, very odd place for a child to be tormented, but I can tell you with a 100% certainty, I was tormented by this place. The crazy thing is, I'm mostly a skeptic. I don't really believe in the paranormal. But with that said, I will admit, my parents, my younger brother, and my cousins, outside of just myself, seem to have had paranormal experiences in this house. Now hang on, hang on, just a minute. If we're looking at it from a skeptic's point of view here, skeptic's point of view, so you're saying that your family, your cousins, your friends, all these people have had experiences in this house, but that's not actual evidence that's anecdotal evidence that is hearsay <laughs> my guy hearsay true i mean it is I'm, i'll admit it is but i guess what i'm trying to do here is use a, a sense of validation to say that like i'm not the only person inside the home that had the experiences but of course i can't really speak to their experiences i can't really you know but i, I get what you're saying i'm just trying to point out the fact that I'm not the only person inside of this house who had a strange occurrence. Now I will say this right from the start. It had the common folklore that pretty much every American child tells their friends, every cousin tells their other cousin. It's the same folklore everybody says. Oh, you know this neighborhood was, you know, it was built on Native American burial ground. I don't know if that's true or not. But that was the rumor for this small, teeny tiny neighborhood that laid inside of Newcastle, Delaware. My guy. Native American burial ground? Okay, poltergeist. What is it? Poltergeist 17 now? Come on. Come on. I, I get it. And every, every kid has these stories, and we all think our neighborhoods were built on an old Native American burial ground. I am personally a huge Craig T. Nelson. Shout out to Coach. 1990 sitcom. That's my guy. Uh, I grew up in the 80s, guys. I mean, I was born in 83. I'm an 80s and 90s kid. Like, so, I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely there's a little poltergeist element to it. I hear you. It's just, it's so gimmicky. Everybody's story is, well, you know, my house was built on a Native American <laughs> burial ground. I'm not... The biggest experience... I ever had in this home it came from somebody calling my name and to make this even worse it sounded like I knew the voice that was calling my name it was familiar to me I almost considered 
following the noise to its root, its origin, which was the bathroom. I thought about actually getting up and walking into the bathroom because the voice was that familiar. So when you say it was calling your name, how? How is it calling your name? It's kind of tough to explain, but it's like, it was almost like from at a distance, like, like when something's calling you from a distance and you can tell the general direction which it's coming from, which to me sounded like the bathroom. But I mean, it was literally calling my name. It was saying Stephen. It was repeatedly calling my name. And I, and I think, I mean, I'm an older guy now compared to a really young guy. But I think it was actually saying, like, come to the bathroom. I think it was directing me to the actual bathroom. Like, like and it sounded very familiar. But now here's the crazy part. Eventually, my better judgment takes hold of me. And I realize what's going on, and I shake my older brother. I wake him up and I say, Hey, do you hear that? Something is calling my name. So when you say your brother, we're talking about LJ, right? Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> LJ. That's my older brother. Uh, if anyone's going to torment you when you wake them up with a general concern... It's LJ. <laughs> yeah. Like, and of I course, my older brother, being my older brother, he began to play around with me a little bit. So then he started to call my name. But truthfully, I could tell the difference between my brother playfully calling my name and whatever it was that was calling my name before I woke my brother up. I have to say, to this day, this is the most scary story or event that has ever happened to me. To have a disembodied voice that I could clearly hear saying my name and calling me repeatedly to a location that was in a dark, small little corner of a two-bedroom, one-bath, 525-square-foot cottage in the middle of nowhere, Delaware, 20-some miles outside of Philadelphia. It may not sound scary, but I'll ask you this. How scared would you be if you were alone in your home right now and something started calling your name? So, that's the story. That is literally, in my experience, the most scary event that's ever happened to me from the realm of the paranormal. Even as an adult, it still gives me the creeps that one day I could hear this voice recalling me again. I mean, it's a mighty small space. Sounds Kaneko. I mean, I have my doubts. It could have been anything. You could have been dreaming and woke up and then LJ just, he had to just keep pressing those buttons. I mean, but me being me, I like to play both sides. I don't really like to rule things out. So, it totally could be legit. It was a creepy house, and it was a very small space, but it was a completely creepy house, and there's so many stories to bring you from this house. But I'll say this from the skeptic side of me. As an adult, how do I rationalize this so that way I don't have to have my wife go into the bathroom with me every time I go to the bathroom? <laughs> um, I tell myself that it's probably, it could be a form of sleep paralysis. You know, normally when you come out of sleep paralysis, you see somebody when you're in that half awake, half sleep, half conscious kind of state. I, I don't know if this was something I was dreaming that kind of leaked over into my consciousness as I was coming awake. It scared the crap out of me. Like... To this day, I'll admit, if I was somewhere by myself and it was dark, and I heard that voice calling my name, I'd probably run out of my shoes to get away. But, do you honestly think it's paranormal? Could be. I mean, it could be. And I feel like if it had been a weirdo, like, hiding out in the bathroom, that had been stalking you, like you, you see on those TikTok videos or whatever, um, the house is small enough that you would have heard that person come in. I'll be honest, my gut instinct tells me it was a form of sleep paralysis, or it was a waking dream type 
situation. That, that's that's what it tells me. But I'll kick it to you guys. What do you think? Have you ever had something call your name from the darkness? Let us know in the comments down below. All right, y'all, until next time, this is the I Have My Doubts channel. And we appreciate y'all tuning in, and we will see you guys on the next video.